Hello and welcome to a video from StatController.com. Uh, uh, in this video, I'm going to teach you um, something that I find I found quite hard to find um, information on when I was uh, starting up my comic, and that is how to set up a comic strip template with a view to the future. Because the problem is, um, a lot of people, you know, know how to draw, draw comic strips, but they don't realise that. In the future, um, they may want to do prints or high res images or, or whatever of these comics and it won't print out. So, uh, I'm going to be using Photoshop, but the premise is very much the same in whatever drawing software you wanted to, to, to do. Um, so, first thing you want to do is obviously open up a new file and we're going to call this template. You can call it whatever you want, you, don't, you can leave it untitled, it doesn't really matter, that's irrelevant. Um, and then what you want to do is you want to set the pixels per inch at 300. 300 is the minimum you want for if you're thinking about printing it out in the future. You can always scale down, but you can never scale up when you're drawing with a uh, pixel based uh, drawing program like Photoshop. If you're using uh, Illustrator or something like that, then they're vector based and vectors can redo the math and all over the shop and it's fine. However, with pixels, you can always go down, but you can't go up. So start off minimum 300 and then a comic strip size uh, for example um, one of the most popular web comics Penny Arcade they do their comic at uh, 950 by 475 so what I do is I set my width which is the longest part of a strip this is this is basically if you're doing it as a, a, a normal three panel strip um, obviously you can take what you learn from this video and extrapolate if you want to do full pages or um, four boxes on top of each other squares etc uh, so they do it 950 so we are going to do 950 and then add one more zero okay so 10 times the size that you would want it uh, to start off with go away Avast no one cares about you um, and then the height is 475 pixels so we change that to 4750 again times 10 the size uh, RGB colors fine and white basically there's a lot of different types of color uh, when it comes to print and a lot of them use CMYK so you might want to change that to, to you know whatever you want to do but we we'll go with RGB and we we'll contract background white because we can draw on top of that uh, and edit it and color it later and then we click OK and then we get our image and that's your basic comic strip size okay penny arcade will have that as a three panel strip um, and then what we want to do is create a new layer and then draw our borders and to draw the border this is something that a lot of people know straight away and a lot of people that you're not really that savvy when it comes to things but this took me about a year to realize and I never knew you could do it but if you hold down the shift button when you're drawing in Photoshop so if you draw a line normally you know it draws it however accurately you can draw a line However, oh, I've got my touch set off, have I? Well, bollocks to you. Uh, however, if you hold the shift button, it will do it dead straight at 90 degree angle. So if I, draw a, if I draw a line across the top holding the shift button, it will draw it dead straight. If I draw it down, dead straight. If I draw it at, an, at a 45 degree angle, it will choose where which one I'm slightly towards, and that one worked out straight, okay? So what we wanna do is we'll set up where we want our lines, you can do this, you can measure it out, you can get the grid up if you wanted and do it, but there's no real need. You know you know where your panels are. And you can work out that you obviously always want to leave a gutter. And then and there's your three panel strip. Okay, you can go in on the layer and rub out these areas. But that's the basic premise. And then once you've got this, I'm just going to do it. I'm just going to do it quickly. I'm going to try not to do it too. Because obviously I'm aware that you're sitting there watching me draw bleeding straight lines at the moment, and that's hardly riveting. But like I said, this was one of the things that I couldn't find information on. I found information on, you know, how. Uh, what sizes some people draw them at so I started drawing them at that I found out that the internet goes at 72 pixels so you 
so I obviously you know I set my resolution at 72 pixels but then when it came to print it out it printed it out you know thumbnail size it was ridiculous and you can't scale up because it looks awful so anyway we roughly got our boxes there I'm gonna add another layer just underneath that layer and we are going to select the outside border with the wand we've selected all of those areas which are going to be gutter okay select and modify and then go down to expand okay we want to expand depending on the size of your brush you want to expand by probably about two pixels okay and then we can fill that area in white okay so that area is filled in white now if we take away the background layer you've still got your panel panel borders okay uh, so that helps out so if you're coloring your background in later so you've got a red background because of some reason it won't color in the panel you see and you'll always have that gutter what I do what I've done with my template I'll just take this away what I've done with my template is I've combined these two layers by going to layer and merge layers so that they are the frame layer and then I've renamed it frame like so and that's how my template set up so if I if I go to my template now this is my this is my file for template it will look pretty similar to this and there's my template file with the, the snap controller broken broken gutter that I have and then obviously in the frames area I've got my snapcontroller.com URL and the copyright information and that's it that's basically all you need we go back to the other file if you wanted to do that all I've done is I've taken a text tool and put it in wherever you want and you probably want to use uh, a grey image a fairly light medium grey and then you can put you know www dot hello can I what do you reckon can we have mine thank you www dot random bollocks dot com it's probably not a website but should be and then you know you've got it and obviously you can draw then as zoomed in as you want that's only 50% zoom okay but that is as far out you know you always want to draw close in because if, if I drew a line here on an actual layer Okay, it looks okay, but when you zoom in, it's not great. Okay, you can see the ridges, it's not quite curved. But if I draw it from here, much better. Alright? And that's it. And then obviously when you want to save the file, I always save once um, in Photoshop, in a Photoshop format, because then I can come back and edit it however I want. I've got all the layers, I can readjust it whatever I, for whatever I need. And then when I want to, and then when I want to get it ready for uh, the website, uh, you go into image. Uh, sorry, no, you don't. You go into layout, flatten image. Then you go to image, resize. Drop this down to seventy-two. And then nine fifty, four seven five. Okay, and that's just that's the scale. That it will appear on print if I click OK 100% now is that size which is perfect for the web and that's how you draw uh, that's how you get a template ready for your web comic uh, hope that helps I hope that provides you with the information that you need to go forward and uh, start creating some fantastic web comics if you've got a web comic that you um, that you're starting uh, and if you're new out put a link in the comments and I'll come and check it out um, because it's a lonely old world out there if you're starting out and you haven't uh, you haven't quite got the information that you need um, and there's, but there's plenty of avenues um, that's the best thing about web comics is the community anyway that's a snap controller video hope you've uh, got the information that you need and I'll see you next time